Nuclear warheads roar across the planet. In a matter of minutes, entire cities will be vaporized. The entire northern hemisphere will be irradiated. Casualties will reach in the hundreds of millions. Yet Vladimir Putin is still sitting in a protected bunker somewhere, rubbing his hands together in a maniacal fashion, believing he will somehow win the nuclear war. Is it possible? Could Russia survive a nuclear war against the United States and its allies? Luckily, we have data, simulations, and expert analysis to help us unpack this terrifying chain of events. Let us paint a picture. There are only two different questions we'll answer. The first will be, could Russia survive a nuclear war if they started it? The second would be, could Russia survive a nuclear war if they did not strike first? Either way, there will be death and destruction, but you might be surprised at how Russia fares in each situation. Recently, scientists and researchers have modeled how a nuclear war could escalate if Russia launched a nuclear attack on Western powers. Let's remember that Russia has approximately 5,977 nuclear warheads, of which 1,588 are actively deployed. This means Putin has more than enough nukes to decimate most major cities on the planet. This particular conflict starts under the premise that NATO forces are getting too close to Russian borders. Now that Finland is part of the organization and has extended the border that NATO shares with Russia from 754 miles to 1584 miles, it's only a matter of time before troops are deployed in larger numbers to the border. However, this could back Vladimir Putin into a corner, and just like any wild animal who feels threatened with nowhere to go, he could take drastic actions to save himself and push Western forces away. The sun rises over the European continent. The United States has recently sent more troops to secure the borders NATO shares with Russia and Belarus to provide more security for Europe. Deep in the Kremlin, Vladimir Putin meets with his closest advisors. His intelligence officers update him on the growing number of NATO forces. There are currently around 2 million NATO troops in Europe alone. The Russian dictator taps his fingers against the wooden table. His war in Ukraine has been a disaster. After a year of fighting, Russia has very little to show for its effort other than almost 200,000 soldiers dead or wounded, depletion of resources, and the West defying them at every turn. Putin is quickly losing control of the situation, and if he can't control the narrative, it might be only a matter of time before he's forced out of power by a new regime. Vladimir Putin slams his fist against the table. No, he screeches. NATO has gotten away with too much. I will not let their Western ideologies poison what's rightfully mine. Putin orders a man standing in the corner of the room to bring him the chaguette a black briefcase containing nuclear launch codes. The man approaches with a stoic look on his face. His sole duty is to protect the nuclear codes and provide them to his leader if ever asked. His whole life has been in preparation for this single moment. Vladimir Putin opens the briefcase and reads through different nuclear options. He pushes a series of buttons, and a set of codes are displayed on the internal screen. Get me Kaliningrad on the phone, he says. We're gonna make NATO pay. A general at an airfield in Kaliningrad gently places the phone back onto its receiver. God help us all, he says out loud. He then walks out of the room and delivers a set of orders to his head flight engineer. This is top secret, tell no one. The man glances at the orders and nods. His lips curve down into a dismayed frown. He knows what he's about to do could very well lead to a nuclear war. The engineer orders his men to equip a specially modified Sukhoi Su-57 with an unmarked bomb. When the explosive device is wheeled out of storage, it's very clear what it is. The bomb they're equipping the aircraft with is clearly a nuclear device. The engineers load up the Su-57, fuel it, and prepare the aircraft for takeoff. Only minutes later, the plane's flight team boards and the vessel maneuvers onto the runway. Vladimir Putin decided to take a calculated risk. His orders are to drop a low-yield tactical nuke on a NATO base that sits near the border of Poland and Germany. Once the order's been given, he'll make a statement about how he's unafraid of his enemy. The constant military aid being sent to Ukraine has led to his conventional forces being decimated in battle. Trying to hold on to the little territory they still control from the initial invasion is taking everything Russia has. Putin knows he could never win a conventional war against NATO, but if he shows the world he's not afraid to use his massive nuclear arsenal, perhaps the West will enter talks, and Russia will once again be seen as a major global power. Every military advisor in the room is too afraid to stand up to Putin, even though they know that dropping a nuclear bomb on a NATO base will almost certainly lead to retaliation. The United Kingdom and France are the only two nuclear powers in Europe, but together they have around 400 nuclear warheads deployed across the continent. One general speaks out to Putin's ludicrous plan and pleads with the Russian dictator to not go through with it, but instead of changing his mind, Putin pulls out a pistol and shoots the man in the head. The dead man's body is dragged out of the room. The Su-57 roars down the runway. It rises up into the air, 
and the pilot unleashes the full potential of the two Lyulka Saturn Isdalia 117 turbofan engines. The fighter jet reaches Mach 2, or 1534.5 miles per hour, and proceeds toward its target. The coordinates of the drop are located approximately 200 miles away, which is around 325 kilometers. This means the Su-57 will reach its destination in just under eight and a half minutes. Sir, we've got an incoming bogey. A NATO radar analyst calls from his station. His commanding officer walks over to the soldier. There is definitely an incoming aircraft, and it's moving fast. Get me air command on the phone, he says. The men in the room race to identify the incoming vessel. Fighter jets are scrambled, all options are on the table. Before any final orders can be given, the unknown aircraft passes over the NATO base. It screams overhead and continues on its way. A deafening sonic boom is heard moments later. After a few seconds, there is a bright flash. The low-yield tactical nuke detonates, obliterating the NATO base, but sparing the other structures in the area. After all, Putin only wanted to send a message. He wasn't trying to unleash the full might of the Russian nuclear arsenal against his enemy. In the Kremlin, Putin receives word that the mission was a success and that the NATO base has been destroyed. He eagerly waits by his phone with a smile on his face. He knows the West will be shocked and afraid. They will call and plead with him to refrain from launching any more nukes. His military advisors warned that NATO could launch a retaliatory strike instead of trying to talk things out diplomatically. But Putin has gotten away with so much in the past, he figures the West will come groveling and ask for peace. As Putin waits for the call from Western leaders, the newly tested F-35 Lightning II takes off from a NATO airfield in Germany carrying a B-6112 thermonuclear bomb. It races toward Kaliningrad, where NATO intelligence reported the Russian strike originated from. The F-35 flies Mach 1.6, or 1,228 miles per hour toward its target. In a matter of minutes, the aircraft drops a retaliatory strike on the Russian Air Force base that the attack had originated from. The nuclear bomb goes off and vaporizes every aircraft, vehicle, and person at the airfield. When Russia attacked a NATO base with a nuke, there was no discussion. Article 5 was initiated, and every country in the organization declared war on Putin simultaneously. The decision had already been made behind closed doors that if Russia ever launched a nuclear attack, NATO would respond with equal and appropriate action. In this case, one of their bases was destroyed by a tactical nuke, so they retaliated by striking one of Russia's bases with a nuke. Putin is dumbfounded. He truly believed that NATO's nuclear deterrence rhetoric was mostly a bluff. He never expected the West to actually retaliate with nukes of their own. His decision was a gamble, and now it seems the world is on the brink of a nuclear war. Vladimir Putin had no intentions of backing down. He decides to step things up and show how serious he is. Surely this will cause NATO to enter talks, and if not, the world will end. Putin orders a launch of 300 nuclear bombs and missiles. He will make Europe pay for forcing his hand. If only they just back down and let him do whatever he wanted, none of this would be happening. As soon as NATO detects the Russian nukes, they launch a fleet of fighters and bombers to deliver 160 nuclear devices of their own to Russian targets. Over the next three hours, there will be 2.6 million casualties as Europe is consumed by nuclear war. The destruction is immense. Europe is in shambles, but the enormity of Russia means that they are still a threat. It is the largest nation on the planet, with borders spanning two continents made up of 6.6 .6 million square miles of land. Nuclear ballistic missile silos are located deep within the country in locations such as Kozelsk, Tatisheva, Uzhur, Domborovsky, Kartale, and Aleisk. The United States has lost many of its allies' nuclear bases in Europe. It must attack Russia's continental nuclear missiles before Putin can take out their own. What was supposed to be a warning to NATO forces by Russia has now turned into a full-scale nuclear exchange. The very future of humanity is at risk. But Putin knows that if he backs down now, he will never be able to hold on to power. A barrage of Minuteman III ballistic nuclear missiles is fired from Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska, Montana, and North Dakota. They soar over the Arctic and plummet toward their targets on the other side of the globe. As soon as Putin receives word that the Americans have fired their own ICBMs, he orders the launch of Russia's ballistic arsenal. After NATO responded with its own nuclear strike, Putin realized he needed to get out of Moscow. He's now located in an undisclosed bunker somewhere in Russia. He knows the vastness of his country means that he could still make it out of the conflict alive once the radiation dies down. U.S. and Russian missiles pass one another and continue on to their targets. The immediate casualties resulting from this enormous exchange are relatively low, at around 3.4 million. This is because the ICBM silos of each nation are located in relatively rural areas. However, several of the nukes targeted major cities such as D.C. and Moscow to hopefully cripple the adversary's chain of command. 
although it's what happens next that will cause the most death and destruction thus far in the nuclear exchange. It's only been a matter of hours since much of Europe was wiped off the face of the Earth and hundreds of nukes have been fired over the Arctic. It may seem that there couldn't possibly be a winner in this conflict, but Putin knows if he can cripple the US's ability to rebuild its infrastructure once the nuclear war is over, he still might be able to salvage the situation. There will be long-term consequences for the planet due to the nuclear war, but there is still a chance that Russia could be the victor in a post-apocalyptic Earth. Putin's next move is to target 30 of the most populated and economically important cities in NATO countries, with between 5 and 10 nukes depending on the size of the urban center. However, NATO commanders who are still operating in bunkers of their own do the same thing to Putin's Russia. Submarines that were lurking just below the water emerge and fire their payloads. Almost every active nuclear device has been fired over the last 24 hours. The northern hemisphere lies in ruin. The immediate number of casualties is between 90 and 100 million. The rest of the world watches in horror as clouds of irradiated dust and particles are kicked up into the atmosphere and carried across the planet. No one is safe. Some leaders survive deep in bunkers throughout the United States, Europe, and Russia. Putin is still technically in charge of his country, and the chain of succession is followed in NATO nations. What happens next is perhaps even more gut-wrenching than the events thus far. Both NATO and Russia begin preparing their nuclear reserves. Russia has around 2,900 additional nuclear devices, while the United States has around 1,500 nukes in reserve. Even after much of the planet is destroyed and 100 million lives are lost, the two sides begin preparing for another nuclear exchange. This chain of events is very much a worst-case scenario. There were also countless other ways a full-on nuclear war could go. However, it paints a good picture of just how devastating a conflict like this would be. It could all be started by one bad decision. Theoretically, Russia could survive a nuclear war because of its massive size, but it would not be pretty. It's much more likely that in an all-out nuclear war, no one would win, society would collapse, and whatever humans did make it out alive would suffer a nuclear winter that would last for decades. Even though there are around 143.4 million people in Russia, the vast majority would either die during the nuclear war or flee to other parts of the world, meaning rebuilding the nation would be next to impossible. There couldn't really be a winner in a full-scale nuclear war, but some countries would fare better than others. Unfortunately for Putin, Russia is not one of them. Let's break down a nuclear war started by Russia even further. Is there a chance that NATO would not respond with its own nuclear attack if Russia struck first? Absolutely not. Most military strategists agree that the nuclear deterrence plan of the United States hinges on its willingness to use the weapons in its nuclear triad. But what if Russia launched every nuke it had all at once at the very beginning? Could Putin manage to take out every nuclear weapon that NATO has to prevent them from retaliating and win a nuclear war from the beginning? Again, the answer is no. The reason that Russia would not be able to win a nuclear war in the conventional sense is that NATO has too many contingencies in place and nuclear weapons of their own for Putin to take them all out with a first strike. There is no way to hide the launch of hundreds of nuclear missiles, and the moment that NATO detects nukes coming toward European cities or the US, they will return fire. The nuclear triad of the United States ensures that no matter which part of the military is targeted, nuclear weapons will always be available to retaliate. This might be in the form of B-2 stealth bombers that are already in flight and loaded with nuclear bombs, or it could be the 14 Ohio-class submarines that each carry 20 nuclear ballistic missiles. The difference between the nuclear arsenals of the Cold War and those of today is that they aren't concentrated in one location. Both Russia and NATO subs are located around the globe, and their exact locations are unknown to either side. There is absolutely no way all of the nukes on either side could be taken out before the retaliatory strike could be launched. This is why even if Russia attacks first, whether using tactical nukes or unleashing its entire arsenal, NATO will be able to respond with hundreds of its own nukes. It's a no-win scenario for both sides. If NATO was bluffing about its willingness to use nuclear weapons against a Russian attack, that would be one thing, but this is not the case. If Russia ever launched nukes, it would almost certainly lead to a nuclear war that would decimate NATO nations and Russia. Neither side would win as huge amounts of their population would die and entire cities would need rebuilding. Then there is a surprising key player that would turn on Russia if they were the nuclear aggressor. China has made it clear that they believe nukes should only be used in defense of one's own lands. Beijing has stated that it would seriously reconsider any aid it sends to Russia if Putin used nuclear weapons. So the moment that Russia starts a nuclear war, it would lose its most important ally and lifeline. 
Without China buying its natural resources or sending weapons and key components like semiconductors, Russia would not be able to win any conflict with NATO or a NATO-backed country such as Ukraine. One of the only reasons that the Russian economy hasn't completely collapsed or that it's still able to supply its soldiers with bare minimum supplies in its current ongoing war is due to China's help. Now, imagine what would happen if China cut off all aid and stopped buying Russian oil and gas. Russia would quickly run out of money. Currently, Russia has the 11th largest economy in the world, and if it launched nukes, that would quickly change. One of the main reasons Russia wouldn't survive a nuclear war if it attacked first is because the entire world, with the possible exception of North Korea, would turn against them. No one wants a nuclear exchange. Russia would quickly find many other countries besides China that had previously sent aid withholding weapons, supplies, and resources in order to try and end the conflict. China might even take the bold action of turning on Russia and invading from the east to try to get control of the situation, because in a world consumed by nuclear war, even Beijing knows there are no winners. Russia launching a nuclear attack would be a unifying catalyst that would cause NATO, China, and much of the rest of the world to band together to try to stop it from escalating into a conflict that would end up destroying civilization. We'll discuss the ramifications of a nuclear war involving Russia later on, but it's important to note that the environmental impact of a nuclear war between Russia and NATO would be devastating. Yes, millions of people would die as a direct result of the nuclear blasts, but it's the fallout, the blocking of the sun, and temperature fluctuations that'll pose the biggest threat to humanity. So, between Russia being unable to beat the US's nuclear triad and their closest allies turning on them, there is a zero chance that Russia could survive a nuclear war if they were the aggressors. The cities of Russia and the nation itself would be destroyed, and if Putin survived there would be very little left for him to rule over, which cannot be considered a win. All of this is on top of the fact that the Russian military is already weakened from their prolonged war in Ukraine, so it's unclear if they even have the personnel to launch a full-scale nuclear war. They would need pilots, submarine crews, and soldiers to operate any land-based nuclear missiles. Right now, Putin barely has enough men to hold the line in Ukraine, so it's likely that if he wanted to launch a full-scale nuclear attack, the Russian military would run into problems. In a very worst-case scenario for Russia, many of their nukes could detonate in their silos from years of neglect, or planes and ICBMs would be shot down before reaching their targets. In that case, NATO might just invade Russia after a failed attempt at a nuclear war, and the entire country would be restructured. Let's pivot now and talk about what could happen if somehow Russia was attacked first. What if NATO fired a nuke as either a warning or a way to cripple Russia's own nuclear capability? This is highly unlikely as NATO's nuclear weapons are strictly for deterrent purposes, but for the sake of argument, let's assume the decision was made to hit a Russian target with a nuke. In this scenario, China would likely not stay out of the conflict. If NATO was willing to use a nuclear weapon against Russia, then it would stand to reason they could use a nuclear weapon against China. Therefore, Beijing would condemn NATO's actions, come to the aid of Russia, and gather support from other governments that they're close with to turn against the US and its allies. This would create a global conflict that would likely result in World War III. But what about Russia? Could Putin win a nuclear war with the aid of China and other nations that are against the spread of Western ideologies? In this scenario, Russia would have more help in combating NATO, but it still probably wouldn't be able to win a nuclear war. The previous scenario would eventually unfold, where hundreds of nukes would fly and destroy every major Russian city. It's hard to determine if there could be a winner at all in this scenario, as nuclear war could also turn into conventional war breaking out in East Asia and the Pacific, and even on American soil. When we look at the other countries that backed Russia after their invasion of Ukraine, it's probably a safe bet that those countries would also ally themselves with Russia in a global conflict. However, if an attack on Russia also led to China joining the conflict and forcing other nations to pick a side, support for Russia could greatly increase. We're not saying that if NATO launched a nuke at Russia, the entire world would turn on the organization and become best friends with Russia. However, there could be a major global shift in alliances facilitated by China and its stranglehold over many countries with developing economies. But let's back up and look at what might happen in Russia itself if it were hit by a NATO nukes. When the first nuke detonated on Russian soil, a retaliatory strike would immediately be launched. There would be very little chance Vladimir Putin would want to discuss a de-escalation plan and would rather retaliate tenfold. If China backed Russia at this point, they could provide them with resources, men, and weapons. China also has 350 nukes of its own that it could use during the conflict. Entire economies around the world would shift to wartime production in preparation for World War III. 
Russian hackers could bring down entire systems across Europe and the United States. Nuclear capabilities would probably remain unaffected, but this would not stop Russian hackers from trying to infiltrate NATO's nuclear arsenals to prevent them from firing more nukes. However, this type of cyber warfare wouldn't particularly matter, as any missiles aboard nuclear submarines or already en route via aircraft could not be hacked. If nuclear missiles started to fly, Russia would launch its A-135 and A-235 anti-ballistic missile systems to protect major cities like Moscow from being annihilated. Russia is estimated to have around 68 of these systems deployed, meaning it would not be nearly enough to stop NATO ICBMs. Plus, these defenses are useless against fighters and bombers that would be carrying nuclear bombs into Russia. Six Voronezh early warning radar installations connected to S-400s and S-500 anti-missile systems would fire everything they had to take out incoming short- and medium-range missiles from Europe. However, no matter what countermeasures Russia takes, they just don't have the capabilities to stop an all-out nuclear attack by NATO. The US and its allies have too many nuclear weapons that can be deployed using various methods. Therefore, even with help from China, North Korea, and other nations in the region, there would be little chance that Russia could survive a nuclear attack by NATO if its full arsenal was launched. This is why Putin would likely choose death and destruction for his enemies and launch Russia's full nuclear might, leading to a very similar scenario as discussed at the beginning of the video. So, whether Russia launches the first nuke or is attacked by NATO, the country probably wouldn't survive a nuclear war. That being said, Russia has a much better chance of gaining allies and support if they're not seen as the aggressor, which could give them the upper hand if only a few nukes are launched by each side. This brings us to current remarks by Vladimir Putin. Even though he may talk a big game and try to convince the world that Russia is the most powerful country on the planet, deep down he knows he could never win a conventional or a nuclear war against NATO. This is why even Putin has said there can be no winners in a nuclear war, and why his threats of using tactical nukes in Ukraine have all but disappeared. Then, there is the very real possibility that if Putin ever did decide to launch nukes or start a nuclear war, he would be deposed and ousted from power. It cannot be overstated how devastating a nuclear war would be and the toll it would take on the human population and the planet. If Putin decided to use nukes, Russia's top military officials could initiate a coup that would likely result in the assassination of Putin and his closest allies. Then there's the possibility of enraging the Russian people to the point of a popular uprising. No one wants to die in a nuclear holocaust. If Putin launched nukes, there would undoubtedly be unrest in his own country. The general population could rise up and remove the current regime. NATO might not even be able to retaliate as a civil war would likely arise within Russia and consume the country as a whole. This comes with its own dangers. According to the World Bank, Russia's poverty rate decreased between 2018 and 2020. However, with crushing sanctions slowly crippling the Russian economy and enormous amounts of money being spent on the war in Ukraine, the poverty level is on the rise again. It's estimated that over 17 million Russians were living below the national poverty line in 2020, and this number is likely much higher now. When a population is suffering and the government is not providing for its citizens, it's only a matter of time before a revolution occurs. If Putin ever decides to escalate things and turn the regional conflict in Ukraine into a global one via nukes, it would almost certainly lead to his demise. Could Russia win a nuclear war if they attacked first? No. Could Russia win a nuclear war if they were not the aggressor? No. Russia would lose in any nuclear conflict, but that's not because the country is necessarily weak. It's because everyone loses in a nuclear conflict. Using scientific modeling and data collected by various research teams, it's been found that a nuclear war between Russia and NATO would result in the planet being flung into a nuclear winter. Most experts believe that all-out nuclear war would result in global temperatures dropping by around 9 degrees Celsius or about 16 degrees Fahrenheit as a direct result of smoke, soot, dust, and debris being kicked up into the atmosphere. The reason for this is that all those particles ejected from each nuclear explosion would block out a percentage of the sun's radiation that would normally reach the surface of the Earth. As more sunlight is either absorbed by the particles in the atmosphere or reflected back into space, the entire planet will cool. So a nuclear winter would not only risk the survival of Russia, but every other nation on the planet. But temperatures aren't the only thing that'll change due to nuclear war. Over the first few months after the nuclear arsenals have been fired and entire cities have been vaporized, there will be around a 30% reduction in the amount of precipitation that falls around the globe. Some of the precipitation that does fall will contain radioactive particles, which when ingested can cause mutations in DNA that could lead to cancer. And this isn't just a problem for the Northern Hemisphere, where most of the nukes would go off. 
the debris and smoke would drift across the planet so everyone would suffer. 150 megatons of soot would be released into the atmosphere from nuclear-caused fires. It would take about a week for the atmosphere in the entire northern hemisphere to be blanketed by debris and another week for the smoke and particles to cover the southern hemisphere. Scientists estimate a nuclear war between Russia and NATO would cause reduced sunlight for about three years, at which point the amount of sunlight reaching the planet's surface would be about 40% of what it used to be. Obviously, this will have catastrophic consequences for plants and all living things. Animals, including humans, will quickly run out of food. There would be a mass extinction on a scale that hasn't been seen in millions of years. After around a decade, the debris in the atmosphere would be greatly reduced, and the amount of sunlight that would reach the ground would be about what it was before the nuclear war. However, at that point, Putin, Russia, and the rest of the world would either struggle to survive in a post-apocalyptic era, or the human species would be on the brink of extinction. A nuclear war between Russia and NATO would be a planet-changing event. A small nuclear exchange where the destruction ends before thousands of nukes fly across the globe would be survivable. If Russia hypothetically was able to stop the majority of nukes fired at them from detonating, they might be able to rebuild, but this is highly unlikely. It's more likely that any nuclear exchange between Russia and NATO would result in the dismantling of the current regime and restructuring of global powers. In the initial scenario where Russia strikes first and there are a series of retaliatory strikes, the war would be over in a matter of hours, as nukes destroyed every major city within Russia, Europe, and the United States. A nuclear war where Russia is not the aggressor would likely go better for them, as China would come to their aid, and they would also receive support from countries like Iran, Syria, and North Korea. However, this would almost certainly lead to World War III, which again would more than likely end up with Russia experiencing massive casualties and losing the war. If nukes start flying, Russia is unlikely to survive the exchange. The country would be torn apart either from within or by outside forces. Now watch 50 insane facts about Russia you didn't know, or check out Putin prepares for World War III as Russia deploys nuclear-armed warships.